We humans have a kidney for excretion. Our kidneys are efficient in filtering out all the waste from our body. And this is also true for all the vertebrates. All vertebrates have kidneys. But when we talk about the invertebrate world, we get to see a diverse kind of excretory system. And uh, invertebrates are simple organisms, right? So their excretory system is also very simple. Talking about the simplest protozoa, the, the amoeba, they just diffuse out all the waste that is produced inside the cell. Because they are single-celled organisms, right? We cannot talk of special structures inside them for excretion because they themselves are just single-celled organisms. But as the complexity of the invertebrates increased, we started seeing special structures for excretion. And the very first structure appeared in platyhelminths. Platyhelminths, we know, are flat worms. They could be endoparasites or free living. And their special structure for excretion is called a flame cell. Or we also call it protonephridia. And this is how a single cell looks like. Okay, this is the nucleus. The black dot is the nucleus. And the white uh, thing that's hanging down here are cilia. Okay, let me label it. These are cilia. And this complete structure is called a flame cell. And where are these flame cells located? Well, they are located on the entire body on the literal sides. Okay, on both the sides, you will see flame cells lining on the body of all platyhelminths. Now, how do they function? Well, the upper part of this flame cells are towards the inner part of the body. It is placed like this. Okay. And this broader part, it collects ammonia and waste products from the body fluid and sends it down through this canal kind of thing and leaves it into the excretory duct. Okay, so all the flame cells will collectively remove the waste from the body and will release it into the excretory duct. So this is the excretory duct. Now talking about how it got the name the flame cell. Well, when the waste gets into this flame cells, the cilia here, they help the liquid to go down into the excretory duct. And while doing so, the cilia moves so fast that it looks like a flickering flame. And, and that's how it got its name, the flame cell. Well, coming to the next name, protonephridia. Why is it called so? Well, that again has another story. If you look at the flame cells, you will see that it has no opening towards the inner side of the body to collect the waste, right? All the waste or water or ions get into the flame cell through diffusion. And such excretory structures are called protonephridia. But as the complexity of organism increases, as we move from platyhelminth to annelids, we will see that they have excretory structures that has opening on both the sides towards the inner body surface and also an excretory pore. So such excretory structures are called nephridia. But since flame cells don't have any such opening, it is called protonephridia. Okay. Now again, here we have taken the example of planaria, which is a free living aquatic uh, platyhelminth. Okay, and since it has abundance of water in its surrounding, it can afford to excrete ammonia. But there are endoparasites as well, like a tapeworm or fluke, which are also platyhelminths, right? And they do not have enough water in its surrounding to excrete ammonia. So they excrete urea. Okay. So platyhelminths can both be ammonotelic and ureotelic, okay? And again, these flame cells, flame cells or protonephridias, they not just help in excretion, but they also help in maintaining the fluid balance and ionic concentration inside the body, right? So we can say that they help in osmoregulation of the body, right? Okay, so this was about the excretory structures of platyhelminthes. Now let's move towards a little more complex organism, which is annelids, and we will look at the excretory structure of the earthworm. Now, if you look at the earthworm closely, you will see that it has segments in its body, right? And each segment, or I should say most segments, uh, except for very few, they have their separate excretory structure. I mean, whatever waste is produced in each segment, it has a structure that throws out directly from that particular segment. Okay, and that structure is called nephridia. Now, here is a thing to note. Few annelids can also have protonephridia in their body. 
but most annelids they are seen to have nephridias and this is how a single nephridium looks like okay now let's talk about how it functions okay as we discussed uh, each nephridium is present in a single uh, segment of earthworm right and the opening the funnel shaped opening is towards the body cavity or or the coelom right and this funnel shaped opening is called a nephrostome and as you can see it has cilia surrounding it this cilia helps to bring in the fluid into this nephrostome okay and the nephrostome proceeds towards this funnel kind of area which is also called the neck the neck also has cilia inside it right they help to send the fluid down towards the rest of the coiling part of the uh, nephridium okay now here i have made just three loops in the nephridium but uh, in reality it is highly coiled very highly coiled okay and this coiling or the length of the nephridium actually helps in reabsorbing the water and ions into the body of the uh, earthworm okay so whatever important ingredients was sent out is actually reabsorbed in this coiling part and whatever remains it proceeds through the loop and gets out of the body of the earthworm through a pore which we call the nephridiopore so this nephridium the excretory structure of annelida it helps in excreting the nitrogenous waste and also helps maintain the body fluid and eyelid balance that is osmoregulation okay and just like platyhelminthes even in annelida if there are enough water in its surrounding they will excrete ammonia they will be ammonotelic and if they have less water in their surrounding the nitrogenous waste will be urea and they will be ureotelic okay Now let's talk about the excretory structures of arthropoda. Here is a mosquito for example, and these tubes hanging from the gut or the alimentary canal of the mosquito, these are the excretory structures of uh, the arthropoda and they are called malpighian tubules. And where exactly are they present in the alimentary canal? Between the mid gut and the hind gut, okay? And they look like finger-like projections. and they could be present between 60 to 150 in numbers now let's talk about how do these malpighian tubules function so here i have enlarged a single malpighian tubule and uh, as you can see it is open only towards the gut area only towards the alimentary canal right now we know arthropods they excrete uric acid right in the form of pellet or um, a paste and they do that by sending out the uric acid into these malpighian tubules along with water ions and all all the stuff that's in the hemolymph they don't have red blood like us they have hemolymph and from the hemolymph the uric acid water and ions they are all sent out into the malpighian tubule okay now as the uric acid gets into these malpighian tubules the ph here is acidic and that uh, that precipitates the uric acid in the malpighian tubule okay and that is how we get a paste or pellet kind of uh, excreta from arthropods okay and uh, whatever important stuff that was sent into the malpighian tubule like water uh, ions are absorbed back into the body So this is how the malpighian tubule works and that is how arthropods excrete. Moving ahead let's talk about the excretory system of crustaceans. And here is an example of prawn which is my favorite seafood and this is often cooked at our place okay and I often see my mom cutting and cleaning it properly before they are cooked. And and she particularly cleans the head area really well. and later in life i understood that crustaceans they pile up their waste somewhere in the head area underneath the antenna okay and upon closer look at their excretory part it would look somewhat like this and we call it the green gland and they are called green gland because of this green portions that you see a p shaped portion uh, which is green in color and that's why the whole thing is called the green gland okay and these two are present on either sides of the prawn okay we have a pair we can say and this is not the end of the excretory part okay these two parts they extend down into a sac kind of thing but we will not discuss about that in this video we will only limit our discussion to these green glands okay so the green gland composes of this 
part called the end sac. Then attached to the end sac, you have these tubular connection like thing, which we call the labyrinth. Now let's talk about how they function. Okay. So crustaceans, they have hemolymph, right? So the nitrogenous waste is all absorbed into the labyrinth and the end sac. Okay. And the nitrogenous waste and all other waste produced inside the body goes down the labyrinth into this this part which is called the bladder and the excretory portion is all stored in the bladder before they are excreted out through these pores that you see these pores are called ureter ureter or excretory pore okay and these are present underneath the antenal coxa and that's the reason this uh, green gland is also called antenal gland and again, since crustaceans or prawns, they are present in abundance of water. They are aquatic. They excrete ammonia and they are ammonotelic. And this is their excretory structure. So in this video, we looked at four special excretory structures of invertebrates. The flame cells, malfusion tubules, nephridia and green glands or antenal glands.